what is courage? What is it? What is it for you? I think I can safely say that we're not in Kansas anymore. We're in a wholly different time. And if I could have put those darn ruby red slippers on and I would have made them look good, just couldn't get them on my Fred Flintstone feet. And if I would have tapped my heels three times and said, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Hoping to be transported back in time to some moment where there seemed to be some normalcy. My friends, I think I can safely say that train has left the station and it's not scheduled to return. Courage. Have you ever noticed sometimes over time that words seem to change in their meaning? Words that meant one thing at one time morph into something else, and yet courage stands. I had a brilliant idea about 30 years ago that I should jump out of a plane. So I grabbed a friend, who actually remained a friend after this experience. I grabbed a friend and we drove up to California City. And we took three hours of a, dare I say, crash course <laughs> in what to do in the worst case scenario. We had a small lunch, and I mean small, because we didn't want to lose it later. Went up in a plane to about, I guess it was about 13 to 15,000 feet up. And this was pretty much an idiot-proof experience to the degree that it was called the stat line jump. For those of you not familiar with stat line, stat line basically means they don't trust me to open the parachute, and there's going to be a string connected from the plane to the chute to pull the ripcord. Well, the pilot got to where he needed to be, they opened the door, and I don't know if you've ever been in a plane with a door open at that level of height. I can promise you it's very disorienting. It's even more disorienting when they motion you to come, and you stand in the frame of the door. and you stand in the frame of the door. But you get a perception, a view that you've never had before of the world. You see the sky and the clouds, and you see the earth below, versus being in the middle of everything. And whether I jumped or was pushed, I can't tell you because I wasn't completely conscious in that moment that I left the plane. Yes, the stat line did open the parachute. But all there was was the whoosh of the air around me. And playing with the toggles on either side of me. They told me not to do that, but I just couldn't help myself. And you're heading down for a very large circle below, and they have concentric circles going in, so if you're really good, you'll land in the middle. And I didn't land in the middle, but I landed. But in the process of getting from here to there, I had about a good five minutes.
I could use that five minutes again. We all are contending with what we're having to contend with, and I'm going to ask you for the next few moments to suspend the narrative going on in your head that happens all the time. Little narrator inside there going, well, that's not how I would feel, that's not what I would do, this is when... Yada, yada, yada. And I want you to do me a favor. And I want you to stand in the frame of your door and look at what's before you. And every one of you will have a completely different picture in this moment. And that's perfect for this conversation. Courage. When I originally was thinking of what I was going to speak of today, it was all the normal things that I could think of. Grand gestures. Huge enterprises. People like Martin Luther King and Gandhi. But you know what? I'm not Martin Luther King or Gandhi. And chances are, the vast majority of you aren't either. We all lead our lives. But our lives are no less courageous. Every morning, we all have to get up and contend with what's going to go on within our families. Some of you may be an exception to the rule, such as am I. I've never been married and never had kids. But for others, it's wholly different. I can't imagine what it's like to have a child and consistently worry about what's going on with them in school. Imagine a child's courage who doesn't conform or fit with what is considered normal at school and what they have to contend with. Isn't that courage? Isn't it courage for a migrant farm worker to go have to go out in the field and deal with the day-to-day -day ramifications of a decision of how they decided to make a living while well, pesticide planes are roaring above them. Isn't that correct? How about the child who has no parent, no foster care? Isn't that correct? There are many so nuances that we could go on all day using examples like that. What I love about being a Unitarian Universalist is that there is respect, admiration, encouragement, support, and love, no matter what is going on for anyone. Because we believe in the courage of all individuals, don't we? There will be a time shortly that we're going to be asked to vote. I am hoping all of you are registered. I know that California is a state where you can register at the absolute last moment, and I would ask you not to do that. Too many things can go wrong. I would ask that you grab a friend and ask them if they're going to be voting and support them in making sure that they've read their informational pamphlet and are making informed decisions. 
Now, I know a lot of you are not comfortable opening your mouth and doing things like that necessarily to people that are within your intimate circles because, after all, how many times have you opened up your mouth before and somebody shut you down? But the nice thing about being a UU, just between you and me, is we don't care. We still go out and bang on people's doors that we know. And while we're standing in the door frame, looking at whatever we're looking at, and thinking about voting, I am a non-militant vegan, which means that I believe that I should not or have the right to pound on people's heads and say, hey, go plant-based. But here's the problem with not going plant-based that I've just realized. Do you realize that on most days, people that eat meat, men eat just over four ounces and women eat about 3.5 daily? You know that? Doesn't seem like a lot, does it? But let's multiply that out. Do you realize that global warming is not because of commercial and industrial enterprises, it's because of cows. And it's not from cow methane through the back end, it's from cow methane through the front end. You get enough cows belching, and it actually affects the global community. So while we're standing in the doorway thinking about everything else that's going wrong, Let's think about cows belching. It's a cartoon image, yes. But it's a cartoon image that underscores the need to actually be serious about it. We're all little mice looking for our roar, aren't we? I'm also going to ask that while we're standing in our doorway, that we think about what it is that we can do to extend ourselves even further out into the community. Ventura County is vast. Vast. But what I didn't understand is that there's only about 888,000 people in our good county. Under a million people. Doesn't seem logical, does it? And of that, now, under 2% are black. The only thing that is basically equivocable to the number of whites that are in the county are the number of Hispanics. It's about 48% each, if you were wondering. But look at the disbursement of where the brown people are, where the white people are. I moved to Oxnard. I was living in Lake Sherwood for a very long time. When I originally moved there, I didn't understand that it was incredibly conservative territory. <laughs> incredibly. And after 14 years of being there, I thought it was time to go home. I went to Oxnard. Do you know how much pesticide residue resides in Oxnard? A lot. That when you spray pesticides, it actually goes about 2.5 to 3.5 miles beyond the realm of the fields that it's being sprayed depending upon what's going on with the wind that day. I would ask for all of us, as Unitarians, to research even more than we already do about where we live. 
and support organizations like Buen Vecino that actually support the farm workers who are having to contend with this directly. That can be one more exercise in the world of courage for us all. How's it standing in your door? You ready to be kicked out yet? You ready to fly? Every one of you holds the key to your own happiness, and you know that. That's not the point. The point is to share the happiness with even more people than you already are, and you're already comfortable with. There are so many gyrations and variations of things that we can do. When's the last time that you talked to someone about their courage? their sense of courageousness, things that you could do together. You know, the thing that makes it interesting to me is, is that we all operate as our own units. We live in our own home. You know how much water and energy is used in the process of doing that versus what happens when you live in a joint effort? an apartment, a condo, that type of thing, you use a lot less water, a lot less material possessions. Now, a lot of you are going, well, it's the American dream. Yes, it was. But remember, the train has left the station. We're heading for territory that we're not going to understand until we're there? Why is it that our society is reactive versus proactive? We have so many things going on right now in front of us. And I understand that. I mean, who can ignore the political ramifications of what happens if we lose the next election? But here's the thing, only 1%, 1% right now, according to Harper's, of the United States considers global warming to be worthy of their time and effort. Do you have kids? Do you have grandkids? I need courage, courage to speak into the vacuum, courage not to care what people think, courage to embrace that which is inevitable, but do it now. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on in everybody's lives. Going on in my life, too. But we have the ability to work together as a unit. We do it all the time. We do it with love. We do it with care. We do it with thought. We do it with joy. Joy. It's an amazing thing.
We don't go proselytizing, knocking on doors. But, you know, one of the things my father always told me is, is that if you have a message that's apple pie, sell it. We're apple pie. We're everything that everyone would want to aspire to be. With no downside. So I hope if you're watching, and you haven't explored being a Unitarian Universalist, that you'll take a closer look. And if you're here visiting, I hope you'll do the same. And extend to yourself, as you're jumping out of that door frame, the courage of that exploration. Go in peace. Go with love. Go with courage filling your heart. And take care. Roar.